you want the sun to go away, just plan on making a video on solar power for that day. It has been crazy how many days that I have planned to do this video on solar power and the sun is not shining for some reason, either it be snow, rain, or fog. I'll give you a montage of all the clips at the end of this video. So since the weather is not cooperating with me, I thought I'd just have a little discussion video about getting started in solar. And there's two things you really need to ask yourself before you go out, start buying a whole bunch of components, and end up wasting money on stuff you don't need. And the first question is, what do you want to power when the grid goes down? And second, you need to ask yourself, are you using this solely as a backup for when the grid goes down? Or is this something that you plan to use regularly once you have it in place? If this is something you're using strictly for when the grid goes down, this can affect what type of solar panel you get. For example, it'd probably be a lot better to get one of these flexible or semi-flexible solar panels instead of a rigid solar panel that you need to mount somewhere. If this is something that you're going to use regularly because you invested the money in it, so you might as well use it as much as you can, then you're probably going to be putting a lot more money into it, getting some solar panels that you can mount on your roof or on a pole or someplace and leave up permanently a really good sized battery bank, really good inverters, you're going to be putting a lot more money into it. But what devices you plan to power will greatly affect what components you need to buy for your solar system. So let's run through a few devices real quick and we'll come back and talk about them and how they affect your system a little bit. I highly recommend you going around your house right now and making a list of everything that you think you would like to run when you don't have electricity. Lighting, cell phones, flashlights, television, gas oven, microwave, bread machine, private water well, and your central heat and air. I'm sure there's other things you can think of, but I thought these were good examples of how what you want to power will affect the components you need. The most common thing that people want when the grid goes down is to have lights. And honestly, if you're just looking for lights, I would highly recommend going USB. I did a video on this called Lights When the Power Goes Down, a portable system. It kind of reviews this a little bit more. But just to recap, this is a USB solar panel from Tesla Maker. Really like this thing. Couple it with a USB bulb and a USB power bank. Either a cheap one like this, or I really recommend this through night charger power bank combination thing. This thing's really versatile. But anyway, something like that. Um, give you some lighting for many hours. Um, small portable relatively inexpensive when you start comparing you know solar systems and USB will also keep your cell phone going because staying in touch and getting the uh, alerts off of your cell phone is really handy these days cell phones and flashlights of course fall into that same category but I'd like to go ahead and add that you can use your car if you own a car and just get yourself a nice solar panel like this this is a 50 watt one semi flexible it's from Renergy. I really like dealing with Renergy so far. Um, you can use the battery on your car. Use the you know 12 volt power outlet inside your car to charge your flashlights, charge your cell phones, whatever. You could even put a small inverter on your car, run an extension cord into your house, and power a 110 volt lamp. You could also do that same setup with your television. The reason I mentioned a television in here is. I actually like getting a lot of weather alerts from my TV. Getting it off my cell phone works really well too, but getting it off the TV is another good source. But not to mention, if you are snowed in, running your TV might be a really good idea. You know, your TV and DVD player, so you can watch a movie. Give yourself something to do. That would also be pretty easy to do off your car. If you have a gas cooking range, you could actually just get a car jump pack with a built-in inverter in it charge it off of a solar panel, again like this 50 water. Your oven only needs the power to run the igniter, so very low current draw. And also you could run a lamp off of that jump pack too. So that ends up being a halfway cheap system. You know, buy this solar panel and one of those jump packs with a built-in inverter. That's a pretty good backup system. And also, you know, you can start your car off of that too if you need to. And everything else in this list from here on is something you're going to be buying 
some pretty good sized components for and probably making a semi-permanent, if not permanent, installation. Um, a microwave. A microwave might seem kind of crazy to try to run it off of solar power in a grid down situation, but just because they're such a high current load, you know, they really demand a lot of watts to run. Um, I've actually experimented with my microwave and I cannot run it off of my inverter here that's 2000 watt. Uh, I think it's, yeah, 2000 watt inverter, 4000 watt peak. Um, it will not run my microwave. That claims to be a 1500 watt microwave. So I had to have a 3000 watt and 6000 peak or whatever it is inverter to run it. So that's a pretty good sized inverter. You're going to have a really big battery system for that because you know that's a lot of amps coming out of the 12 volt side the nice thing about it is you only have to run your microwave for a couple minutes you know four or five minutes that tops you know depending on what you're making and you can make oatmeal in what a minute and a half depending on your microwave you know ramen four or five minutes that's that's actually something that'd be really nice to have um you know and all that food in your freezer, that's probably going to melt. <laughs> you might as well start microwaving it, right? So definitely something worth considering. A bread machine. Oh, bread is done. But the bread machine is really nice because for me out here, we get some really nasty blizzards in the winter. And I literally may not be able to get to the store to buy bread for a couple weeks. It's happened to me before. So... Being able to make bread is really, really nice when you're snowed in. Nothing like a warm loaf of bread. Um, but there again, that's about the same system as a microwave. You can get by with a lot smaller power bank if you are willing to do things when the sun shines or when the wind blows if you have a wind generator and, you know, make use of the power as you get it. And then, of course, if you want to get really big and something that is definitely worth considering, if you're on a private well, you need to get water. And getting an inverter to run 220 volts and a battery system that can deal with the kick-in of the water pump is a very major investment. You're going to need a large battery bank, a very large 220 volt inverter. Um, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. And, you know, if you're just going to do it when grid down, you could probably not need near big of a solar panel array. Um because you could probably just turn it on in the morning, fill up some jugs, shut it off, turn it on in the evening, fill up some jugs again, something like that. You know, just basically let the uh, solar panel charge your battery bank all day. And also, when thinking of the water well, it makes me think of your air conditioning or heating system. And running your 220 volt central air conditioner is probably not going to happen off of solar power unless you make a major investment. The watts that thing requires is just phenomenal. The startup load is phenomenal. It's, it's a major, major investment to run your central air conditioner. Your central heater, now that can be significantly smaller because most heaters are just 110 volt. Um, I do know my 3000 watt inverter would run my central furnace, central heater, in my old house. It did take a pretty large battery bank though to get it started because that blower kicking in is a lot of amps until it gets up and running. Uh, so the heat side is pretty easy to run, but your air conditioning is not so easy. I actually recommend if you live in an area where electricity goes out during the hot time of the year, I really recommend just getting a 110 volt window air conditioner. Uh, it's a lot easier to run one of those for a few hours than it is to Try to run your central air. So anyway, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully the sun will come out one of these days and I can show you some real world applications, give you some numbers of the stuff actually working. If you have some specific questions and want to see me make a video about a specific question you have, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to discuss it in an upcoming video. Um, otherwise, here's a few clips of me going outside to discover that the sun was not shining and I can't make the video I want to make. Well, this is a surprise. 
This is getting ridiculous. I believe this is the fourth week in a row. On the day I scheduled to do the solar panel video. Okay, week number five. I don't even know what week this is anymore. And once again, no sun today. I swear, I'm not recording the same day over and over again. These are all different days. It's raining again. Again, on the day I decided to do this. 